Hey Booktube, it's Carrie. Thanks for joining me today. I thought I would pop in on this St. Patrick's Day to talk about this little gem. This is The Humor of JFK compiled by Boot and Herndon. It includes photographs and it's a little over 125 pages, so it's a very short, uh, very quick, enjoyable read. I think most of us know how witty and charismatic President Kennedy could be, but this little book offered some anecdotes and insight into President Kennedy's relationship with his family, some of his close friends, uh, political rivals, the press, and even some world leaders. There are a couple of stories in here about interactions he had with Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev, um, and they were all very entertaining. I thought I would share a couple of these little funny stories with you guys. So. The first one is a joke that President Kennedy made in one of his early political speeches. This was actually before he became president, but. So he said, I was almost late here today, but I had a very good taxi driver who brought me through the traffic jam. I was going to give him a very large tip and tell him to vote Democratic, and then I remembered some advice Senator Green had given me. So I gave him no tip at all and told him to vote Republican. What's really funny about this joke is that the press actually reported on this joke and people took it seriously and cab drivers started writing into the papers because they were furious. And so uh, Kennedy actually had to address this kerfuffle and say it was only a joke. I, you know, I wouldn't not give a tip to a cab driver. So uh, I thought that was pretty entertaining. When he was addressing a crowd at another major rally, um, he goes through a list of all of these different dignitaries and people who are in the crowd that he is introducing. And I'm going to pick up about two thirds of the way through the list, but he says, former Postmaster General James Farley, Mike Prendergast, State Chairman, Congressman Kehoe from Brooklyn, Arthur Levat, distinguished state officials, congressmen and senators, assemblymen. At this point, he hesitated, grinned, and added, anyone else who wants to be introduced, hold up their hands. <laughs> and I just thought this was so funny because uh, I think maybe he thought some of these people were, were taking it a bit too seriously, requiring that they be introduced. There's another instance where President Kennedy was working on an answer to his critics of his economic program, and he turned to his chief economic advisor, Walter Heller, who was very tired and weary from working a lot of long hours, and he said with a grin, Walter, I want to make it perfectly clear that I resent these attacks on you. And I liked that one because I thought, you know, in this moment where the pressure is on Kennedy, he could still inject humor into the situation and also it shows the relationships that he had with the people who worked under him, uh, which I think is something, you know, for all of Kennedy's faults, I think that he did have close relationships and tried to have personal connections with the people who worked in the White House. He also kind of poked fun at his family and the links that his family would go to to succeed in the political arena. And at one point when he was at a campaign rally in Illinois, he said, ladies and gentlemen, and my sister Eunice, Mrs. Sergeant Shriver, who lives in Illinois, one of my sisters is married to someone who lives in New York, one in California. We realized long ago we have to carry New York, Illinois and California. Something else about President Kennedy, we do know that he was a bit vain and he didn't particularly like the way the cartoonists portrayed him. They really kind of amplified his hair and he thought that um, their exaggeration of his hair actually made him look heavier. So when a group of cartoonists came to the White House to visit, he said, you see the hair is much less than you have it, and I deliberately took off about five pounds before this meeting. And even at a moment where Kennedy was indisposed, 
he could also inject humor into that moment as well. Um, there's a story in this book about uh, John E. Powers, who was one of his old friends, and while Kennedy was the senator, uh, Mr. Powers walked into Kennedy's bedroom and caught him at a moment where he was still in his underwear. <laughs> and um, he said that Kennedy stated, John, get out of politics or it will take the pants right off of you. Of course, you could inject lots of jokes to uh, that little anecdote, but I'll just let it slide. I did enjoy that there were lots of little stories in here that highlighted some of the political situations of the time period, specifically dealing with the 1960 campaign. And in Los Angeles, uh, there was a question from someone <laughs> who asked, do you think a Protestant can be elected president in 1960? Of course, this was another way to kind of point out that Kennedy would be the first Catholic president if he were to win that election. And Kennedy replies with a grin, if he's prepared to answer how he stands on the issue of the separation of church and state, I see no reason why we should discriminate against him. I just think Kennedy was so sharp and quick-witted that it is really refreshing to read uh, some of these interactions. I think a lot of us today, we, uh, after the fact, when we're in a moment where we're being criticized or maybe we feel kind of defensive, we don't really have a great response. And I think Kennedy handled a lot of these situations uh, very gracefully with great charm. Uh, so I enjoyed this and I hope you all have a great St. Patty's Day and I will see you in the next video.